Today I am here with a rare and interesting piano. Now I'm sitting in front of a Schiedmeier and Sons piano, which was made in Germany, but what makes this piano particularly interesting is this is actually from 1907. Now here in America, those pianos from 1907 and this, the early Schiedmeier pianos are very difficult to find. There's probably only a handful, maybe there's 30 to 50, maybe more than that, but still they're very, very hard to find here in America. Over in Europe, I believe there's more of them since they were made in Germany, but, and this one here was actually sold uh, at a dealer in London at one point because there's a couple stickers on the piano, but at some point during his life it was shipped over here to America and that is where I am right now playing this awesome piano. I really love the logo on this piano. It appears to be an inlay and it's this really really delicate beautiful font. It says Schiedmeier and Son and then the city it was made in which I believe is Stuttgart. Uh, might be pronouncing that wrong. It is a German word and I'm not great at pronouncing those foreign names unfortunately. Another thing that I really love about this piano is this really awesome um, writing on the inside of the harp. It says the exact same thing as on the fallboard as you can see, but it just looks really cool. I've never quite seen anything exactly like that. It's a really interesting font and uh, it's really cool. We also have these very interesting um, I guess designs. There are little emblems on the inside perhaps. They look like the uh, the crowns of a, uh, a country or something like that, you know, like the big emblem of a country. And also here we have the serial number which appears to have been hand painted on. It might not have been, but it is rather rustic looking. And there you can see it says 26431. So if any of you guys want to do some research on this piano and maybe learn a little bit more about it, I do know it was made in 1907, but sometimes you can look up the serial numbers and find more out about these pianos. If you look at the inside here, the soundboard is original and we have a very nice big badge on the inside of the piano. It's a very uh, elegant logo. It has lots of stuff going on. It says Schiedmeier and Sons. Um, lots of German writing that I don't dare pronounce. And uh, let me actually show you what it looks like so that it's not upside down. It's under the string so it's a little bit difficult to see, but there you can see it's a very big and very elegant logo and it looks really cool. Very, uh, very well done. We also have all of this cool design on the harp as well. In lots of pianos, there are simple holes in the harp called portholes that help allow some sound to escape from underneath the harp. But in this piano, we have these beautiful designs that I've, I've seen some pianos do this type of thing before, but this is a particularly well done example. The uh, designs are very crisp and they look quite nice and they're very awesome. I also find it interesting that they used blue felt on the inside and also the strings are not individually hitched at the end. As you can see, the strings loop around the hitch pins and go back to the tuning pins so that one wire of, one piano wire actually consists of two separate strings that are struck by a hammer. A lot of German companies um, adopted the um, individual hitching method um, because it has many benefits over the this method, but apparently Schiedmeier either never went over to that method or they haven't they hadn't done it at this time in their company. I'm just now noticing that there's a couple of very interesting details. First of all, on the lid prop, uh, they have this really ornate, it looks like brass, um, little delicate piece of metal here that just makes it look a little bit fancier. And it's a very, very nice touch. I've never seen anyone do anything quite like that before. It's a very nice touch that often goes overlooked, but it's very, very cool. And also on the side of the piano, there is a knob that is used to lock the, um, the, the lid closed so that during transport, the lid doesn't flop open. But not only is it a knob, they have delicately carved it with kind of what looks like a flower of some sort, kind of, but it's more of just like a spiral design, but it's really cool and I've never seen anyone take enough, take, um, you know, look at the details of a piano this much where they actually carve out the handle of the instrument. Another thing I wanted to point out about this piano is if you take a look at the case, it's rather interesting because we have these points here on a more modern piano. There's not one really next to this piano, so I can't demonstrate it, but I'm sure you're familiar with it, where the side of the piano gently curves in here, and then at the end of it, it curves here as well, and then just makes a nice curved shape to the back of the piano. But if we look here, there's actually a there's a, it's a separate piece of wood that is put here. And then you can see that it makes a corner as well as over here on the front where you already saw and also in the back of the piano as well. And the reason this is done is because it, that's the way that harpsichords are built. The um, instrument, the frame of the instrument is actually built out of separate pieces of wood that are then uh, glued together to form the pieces. So this whole curved piece of the rim here is actually a separate piece than this straight here on the side. And also it's a separate piece from the curved piece on the back.
and that is what creates this interesting design. So that's one way to tell when a piano is older is if it has that design. Now again, not all older pianos have that, but if you see a piano with this design, there's a good chance that it is an older piano. But I do want to say that Bosnerfer actually continues this design on some of their models. I believe the 225 and the 290 have this design here where there's corners on, I don't know if it's here, but I know that they do it on this part of the piano as well as the back to kind of harken back to the days of harpsichords and early pianos. I also wanted to mention that the legs on this piano are particularly interesting. I believe I have heard some people call these ice cream cone legs. Um, I don't know if that's the proper term for it. It kind of sounds like a slang term, but you can kind of tell where that name would come from as it does look somewhat like an ice cream cone with stacks of ice cream on top of it. We do have cables here for the lamps that are on top of the piano, but it has these really cool carved legs with a very nice big caster on the bottom, which has some... Um, interesting metalworking going on as well. If you look at the lyre, you can see that it matches the style of the legs, and of course, all three legs match, which of course makes sense. Another interesting detail about this piano is that since, this is, since it is an older piano, it only has two pedals. Earlier pianos actually only had two pedals, and it was a bit later in the piano industry that people decided to put an additional third um, pedal on the piano. You can also get a better view of the lyre and see that not only have it does it match the legs somewhat, but it is very delicately carved, even though it's a part of the piano that very few people other than you and me are going to look at. There's also a close-up of the caster that I was mentioning. It's in very good shape considering that the piano was made in 1907. And there you can see that delicate metalwork that I was talking about that, again, nobody would ever see except you and me. So I think that's kind of cool that they put the details into the little parts of the piano that literally nobody else would notice. So now I'm going to give you a demonstration of this piano, and I'm first off going to start off with playing an original composition that I wrote to test out pianos. It starts off in the treble, works its way down into the bass, and it gives a general idea of what the piano sounds like. But I also thought I would play a couple other songs for you as well. So first I'm going to play that, and then I'll play some other stuff as well. As you can hear, even though some of the unisons on some of the notes are slightly out, the piano has a very warm and resonant tone. I particularly like how in the treble, when you play some notes, the rest of the piano really resonates and sings. And also, this area of the piano has a very warm um, sound. When I was kind of cool is most of the piano is original, but I do believe that it has new hammers on it because um, they do look um, much newer. They have blue felt on the inside, so they might be, I believe Renner makes uh, blue hammers called it Renner Blues. Maybe not, but they do have blue felt inside of them, so perhaps any of you piano technicians might be able to inform me. I do know that there is a modern piano hammer company that makes hammers with blue felt inside, so that's probably what they are. It has a very, very nice sound, and I'm sure that those new hammers are really um, causing it to have such a great sound. So now I'm also going to play a couple other uh, pieces of music on this piano. I'm also going to play a hymn that was harmonized by Bach. It was originally written for the organ, but it works quite well on the piano, so hopefully you enjoy it. And it does a really good job of bringing out this section of the piano, so hopefully you enjoy it.
As I said, this piano has a very mellow tone and it also kind of has a dark kind of sound as well, which is a term that many people like to use to refer to a piano when it is mellow. But to me, there's a difference between when a piano is mellow and one that has a kind of a dark sound. A dark sounding piano really lends itself well to sad and slow songs. So I think Moonlight Sonata is a very fitting piece to play on this piano. I'll just play the first little bit because the song is rather long. So hopefully you enjoyed that little bit of Moonlight Sonata. I think it really fits this piano very well. And another classical piece that really fits this piano very well is Claire de Lune by Debussy. It really brings out those resonant qualities that I love in this piano. So I'll just play the first little bit of that song, which has that really open, beautiful singing resonant sound. I'm actually still working on learning that piece, and at some point I'll be able to play that song in its entirety on some of these awesome pianos, because it really deserves to be played on some of the world's greatest pianos, which this Schiedmer and Sons is, especially considering its age from 1907. One thing I find particularly interesting about it, there's actually a couple things I wanted to mention here at the end. One of them is the action appears to be all original. I'm sure that some parts may have been replaced, like the hammers, and also I'm most definitely sure that regulation work has been done to it, but it plays very consistently, it has a very smooth feel, and it is very, very playable, and it actually feels very nice, especially considering the action is from 1907. It has a great feel to it, it's really amazing. Another thing I wanted to mention about the feel of this piano is that we have real ivory keys. Of course, from 1907, ivory keys were being used. Uh, Steinway quit using them around 1950s, other piano manufacturers stopped using them at um, a bit later date, and if you, one way to tell ivories is if you come here and you look in the light reflection, I'm gonna see if I can get it to do this. If you look at the grain of each key, you can see that each key actually has a slightly different color and a slightly different grain pattern. Some modern pianos will have plastic keys that have little textures and lines in them to look kind of like ivory keys, and some of them even have a satin kind of a finish like this is. As you can see, it's not completely reflective. It's a bit uh, more, trans not translucent, but it doesn't have a completely reflective finish on it. But as you can see, the um, finish and the little grain on each key is different. And also when you sit down and you touch an ivory keyed piano, you can really feel that your fingers just somehow stick to the keys better, most likely because of that texture. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that review of this very beautiful, very wonderful, and also very rare Schiedmeier and Sons piano. A little detail I like that the store has done is they put these lamps on it, which I think really make the piano look a lot nicer. Um, it already looks very nice, of course, and the lamps really help illuminate it and bring out this beautiful wood color, which I absolutely love, particularly behind here where the sun has never touched it. It's this beautiful dark wood, and uh, maybe it's walnut. That's my guess on the wood finish. I'm not an actual... An a total wood expert, but I'd guess that this is walnut. If I'm incorrect, please let me know in the comment section down below. And also let me know in the comment section what you think of this piano. Again, Schiedmeier and Sons are very rare. I actually own a more later model Schiedmeier that was um, owned by the German Schiedmeier company, but actually made in Japan by Kawaii, and it's actually a very nice piano, but not quite as classy and beautiful as this one.
So if um, you liked this video, you might want to go check out my channel. I've got lots of videos on pianos. I also have videos on my personal sheet mirror piano, which is going to be my practice piano in my studio. And you can maybe find that video and compare the sound qualities of that piano to this one. That would be an interesting video to do, in fact. And also, if you're curious as to where I found this piano, I will put the information for the store where I found it in the description of this video. So if you're in this area and you want to come play this or some of the other awesome instruments they have here, you, will be feel, you can feel free to do that if you're in that area. And you will find out their information as well. Here's a couple of interesting things that seem to come with the Schiedmeier piano. These are, um, this appears to be, this is all in German so I can't read it, but it appears to be a history of Schiedmeier and maybe some of my German fans, you, don't, you guys don't have to translate all this and write it out in the comments, but maybe you guys might find it interesting to read if you're not familiar with the history of Schiedmeier. You can pause the video and take a look at some of this if you can and uh, if you can read it on screen because it might be very interesting. Here is a picture of what I assume is Schiedmeier's very first workshop. It says in 1809 um, in Stuttgart, which is where the pianos were made for a very long time. Here's something, uh, I don't know what it says, but it says something about Johann Lorenz Schiedmeier. So this must be maybe a uh, list of like the pianos they made or something. I really don't know. Again, I can't read it, so I have no idea what it is. Here is perhaps a factory uh, from 1854. And again, some more writing there that you can pause the video if you're able to read that and check it out. This is a picture of Hermann Lorenz Schiedmeier, and that is the man himself, and here is some more writing. I think you should be able to read that. Again, you don't have to translate this all, but if you do know how to read German, then you might find it interesting to read about the history of Schiedmeier. More writing. As well as a picture of a very early piano. It says hammer mechanic, which I assume means piano forte or a hammer operated instrument from 1784. So that's really cool. More writing as well. Here's another picture of Hermann Lorenz Schiedmeier. Some more writing too. And more writing on that page. This is a picture of Adolf Schiedmeier. This might be his actual first name. I don't know what that says. And there's some more writing. Here's a picture of Gustav Schiedmeier, probably one of the sons. Or I guess the son, because it said Schiedmeier. Actually, no, there were sons. Schiedmeier and, and it says Schiedmeier and son. So maybe there was only one son at a time. More writing. Here are some pictures of some of the pianos I have made. This is a Chippendale styled piano with some more writing about various things. And that is a more modern styled Schiedmeier piano that you can see there. Looks very much like the pianos we have today. That is a very, that uh, looks kind of like a 1950s or 1930s Art Deco kind of style. Well, not quite Art Deco, but a very modern piano look. Interesting th interestingly enough, uh, Schiedmeier also made harmoniums at one point, which is kind of cool. Harmonium is a fancy word for pump organ. Here is George Schiedmeier and some more writing. And then also what appears to be a Schiedmeier showroom in Germany. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Hopefully some of you were able to read that. The last two pages of this little booklet are blank. And then over here is actually another booklet, which I'm not going to pause and have you read, but I will just flip through the pictures really briefly. These are, again, some of the pictures. You saw this exact picture in this other booklet as well. That was their modern 150 centimeter um, long piano. This is, again, the same thing, but with a very fancy Chippendale art case. We have a model 115E upright, continental style, which means it has no front legs. The wood on that is beautiful. It probably says available in all kinds of wood, dull satin finish or high gloss finish, seven and a quarter octaves, so not quite 88 keys. Ivory slash ebony keyboard on request with three pedals. More uprights. That one has a very interesting look to it. Here's that model Casella. That's that. I kind of like the way that looks. I'd love it if that was like red and this was cream color. That would be wild. I don't think it was. It was probably black and white. There's another upright, more uprights. I think that was that Chippendale upright that was in the other book. Maybe not though. There's another upright. Are these the same? That looks exactly the same as one we saw earlier. 
But there you go, that's just a quick look through a Shemar booklet, and I thought you guys might that might find that kind of interesting, just a couple little booklets talking about Shemar. And there's also other things that come with this piano as well, which appear to be documentations of who purchased the piano, but I'm not going to show that because there might be German contact info on there or something, and I don't want to be responsible for anything bad that happened. So I just thought you might find this kind of interesting. So if you want to think about subscribing, you can do that. And if you do subscribe, thank you very much, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye. <laughs>